And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's an every kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write out our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are. Together down the radio. Haven't done this in a long time. Many of you have been asking for it. Here it is. Finally, after many, many months, I haven't done it in a long time. It's time now for another edition of Ask the Atheist. Forgive me, Father, for I will sin. I believe right now Jesus is touching you and he's speaking to you deep inside your heart and he's saying, I want to. I want to heal you. I want to help you. God gives you the ability to get out of poverty. God is my witness. I look at myself in the mirror, and you've heard me say it, many times, and I just preach to myself. Yeah, I, God, God. I mean, I speak it to come on, come on, and I, and then I prophesy, and then I interpret, and I give an offering. In Jesus' name, I pray. I give it up to God. I'm a God warrior. We must come to Jesus with a humble attitude. We must acknowledge that He can, and then we must have a revelation that God wants to touch you and he wants yeah, to he heal, wants you. heal you. Oh, yeah. How do you like our new open for Ask the Atheist? There we go. Yes, you know, many of you have never actually spoken to an atheist that you know of. Maybe you think, yeah, everybody belongs to a church. Everybody is religious. Everybody believes in God. But everybody doesn't. Some people do not believe. An atheist is someone who does not believe in any supreme or superior being of any kind. No God, no Buddha. You know, no Jehovah. No Muhammad. None of it. I'm an atheist. I don't believe in a higher power. Even one that's a doorknob, all you 12-steppers out there, forget it. I'm it. And when my life is over, I'm done. There's no afterlife. There's no getting down on my knees the last minute and deciding that I believe your fairy tale. That's my position. Now, I respect what you believe. I respect your right to believe. I don't get in anybody's face. You know, I know many people who believe in God. And that's okay with me. We have freedom of religion in this country. You have the freedom to believe in any moronic fairy tale you choose, and that's fine. I think that's great. And honestly, I don't get in anybody's face. I know many people who believe. I just don't. Many of you have questions for an atheist. Many of you have always wanted to know, how can you not believe? Or, you know, or other questions for somebody who's an atheist. I am an atheist. I am here. To answer your questions, I am here to uh, withstand uh, the assault that you get because, you know, now we have found that a woman could uh, run for president and get some traction. Uh, We certainly know that an African-American can run for president and get some traction. You know who can't get traction? Atheists. They've even taken surveys that show that uh, that's the category most often named of the kind of person people would not vote for for president. 4 Lee, I make a lot more money than the president. <laughs> so I don't really care that I can't be president. But, um, okay, I am here to answer your questions as your atheist. That's right, I am your house atheist. And so I am here to answer your questions, and we do this every once in a while at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 
1-800-866-5800-866. Ryan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. Good, good. Love your show, man. Love your show. Thank you. My question is this. Um, how do you believe in atheism and deny that there's a blueprint? There's an obvious blueprint in nature, in the human body. In no, 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 there's heart. nothing obvious. You, you believe that. Okay. That's your opinion. You believe it's I obvious, and that is your opinion, and you're entitled to your opinion. But you, you shouldn't expect... Well, I, I don't. I, I don't have any explanation. How do you explain dogs, cats? How do you explain leaves on trees? I don't know the explanation. I also... I'm, I'm looking in the, uh, the studio here at a TV screen. How does that picture get from the camera into my studio? I have no idea. It just does. But if you wanted to find out, there is a book, there is a technician. No, a no, there is a there is there is there is a, a book of fairy tales written by a bunch of guys who claim they were inspired by somebody named God. But there is no actual proof. Tom, if you wanted to understand the intricate working of a computer, the intricate working of rocket science, the intricate working of anything man-made... All right, Dan, uh, explain to us uh, God's blueprint for brain tumors. Tell us uh, why God is giving people brain tumors and uh, how he does. Go ahead. Uh, let's hear the blueprint. My explanation is that but basically, I'm a Christian, so we have two different vantage points. No, no, I want the blueprint. I don't want okay. two different... I want okay. the blueprint. God's I'll up there in heaven, and he's saying, you know what? Joe Smith is going to get a brain tumor. I'm going to give it to him right... How's that work? Okay, God doesn't give it to people, number one. The oh, who's giving says, it to it? The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. I'll tell you, Tom, I have a son... So, in other words, you don't have a blueprint. There's not a there's there's not a blueprint. You just said there's a blueprint. There's blueprint. There's, blueprint, there's technicians. But you see, there are there's no technicians. Everything is random. Tom, you're a very intelligent guy. I know yes, you I am. That's right, right. and you're that's why I know the difference between something that is a blueprint and something that is random. So the human brain doing what it does, a piece of mush being able to conceive of everything that's been conceived in throughout history, that is random, Tom. You're too intelligent for that. Again, uh, who, who gets brain tumors? Well, all right, so then all the brain bad people get brain tumors? Huh? Bra brain tumors are a product of sin in this world. A product of for sin. Every, so every, every church-going individual who has a brain tumor is probably a sinner. We just don't know it. No, it's not their sin. It is sin being in the world itself. Well, what, what is the point of that? To prove that God is not an arbitrary God. Who but he, but he is arbitrary because some people get a brain tumor and some don't. Adolf Hitler didn't get a brain tumor. Joseph Stalin didn't have a brain tumor. Uh, Saddam Hussein didn't have a brain tumor. I understand. Uh, that. Osama but bin Laden doesn't have a brain tumor. Tom, if Christians were perfect, everybody would want to be a Christian. Again, no, no. But you see, again, everybody that's, would want to be that, a Christian. You're, now you're engaging in the same kind of politicking and game playing because you, you first sort of talked about technicians and blueprints. And then when I ask you a simple, basic, straightforward question, you start relying on these cliches instead of answering the real question. Shoot it at me. I shot it at you. The, the, the fact is that brain tumors are random. They are random. They I are, that. Uh, and so be, being that they are random, uh, that means that it's not uh, given to the unjust or the bad people. It is. Focus, it, focus it could be anybody who would get one. Okay, let me ask this, Tom. When you, okay, I know you probably don't believe in heaven, but you. I don't. Of, of course. Why would you I believe in if I don't believe in God? Why would I believe in heaven? Exactly. Have you ever gone to a place, I know you travel a lot, uh, Hawaii, Puerto Vallarta, wherever, where there were times where you could imagine there being a perfect, perfect world because the breeze is perfect, the, the waves are perfect, no. the birds are perfect. No. There's never been a time where you were absolutely... No enthralled by the beauty around you. I'm enthralled by the that. beauty around me. Uh, you know, I just bought a home up in Santa Barbara County of 20 gotcha. acres, and it's fantastic. Uh, but you know what? Uh, if I need somebody to come over and deliver something to me, it's going to take three times as long as it will in L.A. So it's not perfect. It's great, but it's not perfect. Tom, I got the one question you can't answer. <laughs> no, 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 you, no. Here's <laughs> my question. My question is this. Female, the female body is proof of the existence of God. How so? It was, specific, it was specifically created for man's pleasure. And really? Enjoyment. And you can't deny that. Is Tom. that so? You can't deny that, Tom. I don't know who created it or why. In fact, I tend to believe that nobody created it except the two people who forgot to get a condom when they went to the drive-in. 
okay, then how does it lubricate just in time for us to go in there? By, by the way, if you've ever been married, you know that oftentimes it doesn't. Tom Likas. Tom Likas. Go! At 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Welcome to Ask the Atheist. I am your atheist. Woodrow on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, buddy. Um, atheists actually believe that there is a, uh, there's not, they, they don't believe in a higher power. Uh, they don't believe in a centralized God. But uh, as far as you're concerned, uh, you're, you're anacostic. You don't believe in anything at the end. It's, it's called anacostic. No, atheists, actually, atheists athe- an atheist believe- by definition does not believe in a God. Uh, theist yes. is a person who believes in God. And an atheist, it, it, atheism means no God. Yes, it does mean no God, but it does believe in a higher power. And no, it does not believe it. That you are wrong. Nothing. You are wrong. Anacostic, but you are believe- wrong. Anacostic believes in nothing. Uh, again, you are wrong. But an anacostic believes in nothing at the end. My best friend was, was cremated because he was anacostic, and he believed in nothing at the end. Again, you you are just simply uh, wrong about uh, what what I what I said is atheists do not believe in a higher power, and we don't. And here is the definition of an atheist. I'm reading it to you from the dictionary right now. All right, give it to me. Uh, persons not inclined towards religious belief or a particular form of religious belief. An atheist is one who denies the existence of a deity or of divine beings. So so a form of religious belief would include an afterlife. No, no, I'm not talking about an afterlife. What are you talking about? Higher power. Higher power or an afterlife. No religious belief. None. No spiritualism. None. Atheism. Then, then what would anacostic be? Because anacostic I, I've never even heard the word before. But I'm an atheist. I, yeah, whatever your friend is, that's his business. My, <laughs> my, I am what that definition says. Take me up, bong style, brother. There you go, baby. It's Ask the Atheist with your atheist, Tom Likas, at 1-800-5800-TOM-JERITA on the Tom Likas Show. Hi, how are you? Great. You sound great. Thank you. Um, I just have one question. I am a Christian. Yes, dear. Little yeah. proclamation. Um, I was just curious, if it's a fact that energy is neither created nor destroyed, where does an atheist believe our brain activity or energy goes? I, I can't speak for other atheists because there is no dogma to atheism. Okay, what do you, the atheist, believe it? Goes? I don't know enough about that. I'm not a, a brain surgeon. I'm not. Uh, uh, I'm not a neurologist. I'm sure if I studied neurology, I would know more about that. But I don't, and I don't pretend to know. Okay, simple enough. Just curious. I, I think it's fascinating what you believe and. I was just kind of curious, getting a little insight on that. Yeah, I, I, I imagine if I went back to college and I studied neurology, I would have an answer for you. But uh, and where I, it goes when we die, well, I don't know if they know that. Brother. Well, you're assuming it requires energy or that it contains energy, and I don't even know if that's true. Well, okay, simple enough. Thank you very much. Thank you, darling. Appreciate the call, Joe. On the Tom Like His Show, it's Ask the Atheist. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? How you doing? Not much. Not much. I said, how you doing? You said first said, what's going on? And I answered your first question. Oh, okay. You can answer And by the way, why do you ask two questions that essentially ask the same thing? And then critique me for answering only one of the two questions. Um, You going to let me talk? Maybe not. You know what? So far, you've proven that you're really not a worthy, you're not a worthy, you are not a worthy antagonist here. Because you start off your conversation by asking me two moronic, irrelevant questions. And when I answer one of them, you critique me for answering the wrong one. Hey, Tom. Right? Isn't that right, Joe? Isn't that right, Joe? You're not going to continue until you answer my question now. Isn't that right, Joe? 100% correct, Tom. Yes, it is. Okay. Now, 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 answer me this. When you started the segue on this whole Ask the Atheist thing, um, you mentioned you're worshiping Jesus or Jehovah or Muhammad, right? Uh, that I don't worship any of them. Right, right, right. Or but anyone like them Muhammad? either. I, I, I'd like to know who exactly worships Muhammad. I don't know. 
Does anybody? I don't care. I, I'm just curious. I mean, is, I don't know, is, and I don't care. Atheist? I couldn't care less. I'm an atheist. Right, right. I understand that. But I'm just trying to figure out if there's a prerequisite to atheism called ignorance. Uh, again, uh, you know, the fact is that I don't have to know anything about any of these religions because I don't well, believe in it. It's, it's clear that you don't. I'm just asking you. I question. don't claim to. Do you understand? I understand that. I'm there are many understand. subjects about which I am ignorant, yeah. and at least unlike most of the callers to radio programs, I admit that. Well, that's good. So you're admitting to being ignorant. No, I'm admitting that there are subjects I know nothing about. Um, I, want, I want you. To I know that, that you're ignorant. Your uh, I know that you're I ignorant, know. and you think you, think you think you think that you can go with me here, and you think you can go at me, and you think you can win, but you can't. Of course, I can. I just did. No, you didn't. You have about four million listeners laughing their asses off at you right now. Sure, I'm they are. Privacy. Right, because you're so hysterically funny and witty and compelling, and so much more intelligent than I am. That's what. It yeah. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's Ask the Atheist. This is Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Tom, it's a pleasure to talk to you. I know, man. Last caller. Ooh. Anyway, I want to throw this on you. Something a uh, professor brought up uh, back in school. So it's about how atheists actually believe in a god because for them to not believe in one, there has to be one to not believe in. That's that's pre preposterous. <laughs> What is that all about? Well, again, it's preposterous. It's just preposterous. Yeah, That's like people say, do you have a dollar bill in your pocket? Well, it says in God we trust that. So you must believe in God. Otherwise, just give away all your money because you don't believe in God. Seriously. Stupid. But, uh, I think a couple of callers ago to act agnostic, we were talking about. I believe I'm agnostic. I believe, I don't know what I believe in, but I believe there has to be something at the start of this. I mean, it may not be a God, but it's got to be something. And what, curious, what is, what is your definition to how, how all this started or what goes on, or you just not care? Well, I, I don't care that much, but I certainly believe, especially when I looked into the history of the Roman Catholic Church, uh, I believe the purpose of religion is to control the masses, mm -hmm. uh, to get them to stay ignorant and impoverished for as long as possible. How else can you explain a pope who's like a rock star who goes around the world telling people have sex without condoms, have all the babies you can, don't worry, God will provide. And, and he tra travels to these third world countries where people are drowning in poverty and tells them to keep doing that. Uh, that, that, I, I, he, he, if you ever needed proof that that's what religion is all about, there it is right there. And I guess for the masses, I mean, if they didn't have something to believe in, I mean... Well, the masses need a, an excuse for why they're not successful at anything, why they never get anything in their lives. You know, it's very convenient to say God did, did, didn't want me to have this or God didn't provide. Instead of saying, you know what, maybe if I got up off my ass and did a little work and took a little responsibility, maybe I could succeed at something. Exactly. Maybe if I wasn't having 14 children, like the Pope said to do, maybe I'd be doing better. Yeah, I mean, I've heard it's also that people when growing up have kind of a father figure and then they grow out of that lose their father figure and that god to them is kind of their grown-up father figure well so they, i'm sure there's some truth in that in fact they, they there are names given to the pope like holy father and they talk about god being the father and god being the son and all this stuff i mean it depends on which version of the religious fairy tale you believe Oh no! I, I mean, religion is all boiled. What it all boils down to is you not having to take any responsibility for anything that happens in your life. So, if you're a big failure, if you're a big loser, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, in any way being responsible because it's probably because God wanted it that way. Yeah, my friend got sick and died, but it's okay. It's, it's God wanted it that way. Right. I didn't kill that guy. God made me do it. That's right. Pleasure, Tom. Have a nice day. Thanks for the call. It's Ask the Atheist, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Uh, How much? I just wanted to ask you, uh, since you uh, don't believe in any uh, religion, any uh, God, nothing like that, you're an atheist, right? Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, does that make you your own God? Because as people say, you know what, God does things for them, you know what, pray, you know, all this, all this mumbo jumbo. Does that mean since you do your own things and you make your things happen, that means you're your own high power, you're your own God, right? I'm the highest power you'll ever reach. <laughs> that's right, Tom. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you, and you know what? Uh, I, you know, I agree on you with, with that, you know. I grew up, you know, 
believing in everything, but ain't nothing going to happen if you don't do it by yourself, you know what I'm saying? That's right. Okay. Exactly right, David. Thank you for that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Glenn on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Got a question for you. Yes. Uh, I, I, I've been listening to you for about a year. This is my first time calling. And being an atheist, why do you, I find you often saying such phrases as, for God's sake, or Jesus Christ. If you was an atheist, why would you say something? It's words? called irony. I also ordered peanut, uh, Peter Pan peanut butter when I went to the supermarket. I don't believe Peter Pan exists. Uh, I made references on this show to Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny, and I don't believe they exist either. And no, I don't believe the, you do but either. The phrase, for God's sake. Same thing. No, but it's for someone that you obviously don't believe. It's why irony. It Hello? Funny? Do you understand irony? It's a joke. Irony. It's a joke. It's a joke. Okay, so then my, it goes to my second question. Fine, I'll leave that one alone. My second question then is, what do you base your decisions on? Or what are the basis for a lot of your daily decisions or, you know? What, what decisions? Uh, the decision what? to get what up the, in the what morning? What the basis for getting married? When you got married I was an idiot. My basis marriage. was that my parents did it, and I thought I was supposed to do it. So it's just based on what someone else did. Right. I didn't get married at a church. There was no Bible. Okay, so you just... got uh, married. I, I got married at the municipal building in New York City the first time I got married. In the same, uh, in the same uh, uh, hallway where they give out dog licenses. So that means, therefore, you will blow like the wind and just go. If somebody says that the uh, planet uh, Pluto is a planet, you'll believe it then, and then come no, find out I would certainly, that it wasn't. I would certainly look at the credentials of the person saying it, and uh, I also believe that everything I believe today is based on what we know today, and that we might know more down the line. Okay, so for the last 50 years, we believed that there was a Pluto, uh, or Pluto was a planet. But maybe two years ago, we discovered that no, it's not a planet. Well, again, you know, uh, that was the best information we had at the time. Okay, so here goes my last question. I'll let you go. If that's the best information you had, it kind of flips over to this question. You have insurance on your house in San Bernardino, I'm certain. You I, don't, I don't have a house in San Bernardino. Okay, or the county. You got I don't insurance? have a I don't have a house in San Bernardino County either. Okay, I'm new to California, so I, I, I've heard San Bernardino. Uh, no, you uh, didn't. Santa Barbara, Santa, Santa Barbara. Barbara County, not oh, not okay, the same okay. thing. S N V. Nevertheless, you made me forget my last question. Um, you have insurance. Why don't you have insurance on yourself relative to this conversation to religion? Why I mean, don't I have insurance on myself? Because I've got no dependents. No, but you have your soul. <laughs> and my soul should have insurance? Yes. I mean... All right, now you're off the deep end. Thank you. Uh, just uh, just see going to the insurance company. Uh, yes, I'm the executive for the Tom Likas estate. <laughs> he uh, bought his insurance policy for his soul, and his soul would like payment. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's Ask the Atheist. This is Liz on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, how are you? Just great. I have one question for you. Okay. Whenever you die, do you believe if you're going to heaven or hell? I'm, I'm going straight into the ground. Straight into the ground. So you don't believe there's a heaven or a hell? I do believe there's a hell. Okay, and if you believe there's do you want a hell... To, do you want to know where it is? Where? It's at 95.5 FM. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM, 1-800-5800-866. You are the voice of reason in this godforsaken world. It's the Tom Likas Show. 97.1 Free FM. SoCal's FM Talk Station. From Hollywood, my name is Tom Likas. And here we are with another edition of Ask the Atheist. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. We have our very first caller. And I want to take this opportunity to mention this. We have a very first caller who is using the AOL radio software for iPhone. And if you have an iPhone, wherever you might be, you can now hear our show live on your iPhone. Doesn't matter where in the United States you are. 
And if you go to our website, blowmeuptom.com, there's a link and it will take you to the software. It's free. So if you have an iPhone, you could be listening to the Tom Likas show live. No, even if the, your city is is backwards and stupid and the, the radio stations have decided, oh, no, you don't need to hear the Tom Likas show. Guess what? <laughs> You are going to get to hear the show live anyway, like this caller, Jonathan in Miami. You're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Jonathan. Man, it's such a pleasure to talk to you. Um, my question is that uh, being an atheist, did that develop over time, or did you just kind of know, like right when you were, you know, just started growing up and you'd learn about religion and whatnot were you i like, was always uh, an atheist always uh going back but the thing is when i was a child uh i didn't know there was a word for it mm -hmm. i didn't know what it was i just knew that my mother was catholic and was attempting to raise me catholic and i did not believe a word she was saying not a word she was saying not a word they said <laughs> at the church not a word they said it the religious instruction classes she sent me to or the one year I spent in the Catholic elementary school when I was constantly being disciplined for saying things like why does God give us earthquakes and tornadoes and volcanoes <laughs> um, so uh, I've always been one okay uh, it's, uh, but the, it, it's so organic that I didn't even know it was called atheism when I was a child oh okay I, I'm, I've actually developed the same way and I pretty much kind of knew like you said you know you still know what it is but you don't believe all that stuff they throw at you and my dad tried to register me for a catholic school and, and he brought me into the office with the guy there i was like what are you doing i don't want to be here and <laughs> the guy was so embarrassed and they like kicked me out but um yeah have you have you asked other atheists if that's kind of the same way it went or no, I, I haven't really. Uh, you know, my I think everybody's experience is a personal one. I also believe, uh, and I've heard anecdotally, that many atheists did believe in a religion, if only because their parents shoved it down their throats as children. Oh, so they were kind of, yeah, just pounded into them. But they probably maybe... Well, they didn't know it was okay to not believe. Uh, it's perfectly okay to not believe it. You know, your parents always give you the impression, you know, we're Catholics, that's what we are. We're Jews, that's what we are. But you know what? You're whatever you say you are or whatever you believe. That's what you are. It's true. I totally agree. You know, that's a, you, you, religion is not like race or gender, okay? Uh, just because your parents, uh, you know, chop your foreskin off or, uh, you know, pour water on you as a child, it doesn't mean that you are that. It just means this is what they tried to shove down your throat and you didn't accept it. Yep, exactly. Well, hopefully more people will realize that it is okay to not believe. Of course. Thank you, Tom. Jonathan, thank you from Miami. Jonathan on his uh, his iPhone listening on uh, the AOL radio software for his iPhone. Fantastic. Janet on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. I'm just calling so you can kind of explain to me... Um, what an atheist, the definition of an atheist, what it is, because I'm um, kind of confused. My sister called me and let me know that the what you what you were talking, the subject what you were talking about today, and she she told me that I she told me to ask you if you're a religious atheist or an atheist. Period. There are no religious atheists. Atheists don't believe in religion. No, no, I know. Like an atheist um, regarding. Religion, or because she says that an atheist is a person that doesn't believe in any kind of authority. Authority. No, like, I believe in the. <laughs> I'm a, put it this way: I accept the authority of the police. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I accept the authority of, you know, uh, the, obviously the president and the Congress have got responsibilities. I accept it. Uh, I take my shoes off when I'm going through security at the airport. Yeah. So clearly she's wrong. She's wrong, right? <laughs> yes. It has to do with believing in a religion or believing in a so-called supreme being, like God. Uh-huh. Okay. Any kind of like God. Okay. Any okay. kind. Any kind. Okay. So so I think she's listening anyway, so hopefully, I don't know. I, I really don't, since I'm not the one that asking directly, I don't even know what to say. I, I just, I was kind of confused about the definition and... Well, now you but know. I wanted to know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, Tom. Nice Thank you, Jen. To you. Appreciate the call, Malik. Okay.
on Ask the Atheist. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Uh, let's say you're in a desert, right? And they say, in this desert, no man has ever walked. You're the first. You're the first man to ever walk this desert. And you touring this desert and you see a home right there. You go into the home, beautiful carpet. It has lights that turn. Well, none of this on. matters because I wouldn't be the first man. If there was a home already built there, that would mean the men who built the home so would have been before believe, me. You wouldn't believe that statement that you're the first man. Well, because right? a house is built by a man okay. or men. Yeah. And therefore, uh, they were the, 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 the first statement would have been false. Okay, okay. Now, Tom, Earth is that home is in the desert. You have beautiful carpet, which is plants and grass. No, I don't. Yeah. Uh, no, on, it's on, not. It's not because Earth was not built by men. In fact, I don't think it was oh. built by anyone. Hold on, hold on. You also have light that turn on and off, so to speak. Uh, no, the so to speak doesn't count here. Okay. And there is nothing man-made about it. It it is lit. Earth is lit by the sun. For now. And then when the sun, when the sun goes down, when the sun, the sun goes, burns out. Okay. When the sun goes down, then it's darkened. That is its light. Okay. Its grass is the carpet. Well, again, you you are making these analogies. Uh, for for centuries, there was no carpet. Uh, it, it, carpet did not exist until it was invented by man. And there are no, many, no, no, by I'm the way, the desert has no grass. No, I'm talking about grass and plants, okay? That what does this have to do home. with it? This is a very that bizarre... Is home. That is our home. And like you, like you wouldn't believe that someone would say, uh, no man has ever walked this uh, desert if you saw a home. When you see Earth and it's so beautifully made, you should not believe anyone that tells you that there is no God. Well, because then don't God believe me. <laughs> it's getting ponderous, man. 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Mike on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Mike, how you doing? No, I mean, you're Mike. I know, I'm sorry. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Well, if you knew, you wouldn't say, hey, Mike, how you doing? You'd say, hey, Tom, how you doing? My bad. Tom, how you doing? Great. Listen, my question... Well, you don't care how I am. You just asked me. I was about to tell you. Uh, well, I actually meant to say what's up, but oh, well. Listen, I was raised in... So you don't care how I am? Actually, I do. Actually, I do. Okay. But I was I'm raised doing... in home that I'm was... trying to tell you how I am. How are you? I'm doing great. That's good. I'm glad to hear it. I was raised in a home with a hardcore Catholic mother and a father who's atheist, so I understand where you're coming from. But my question to you is, um, if you don't, is there anything that you do believe in? What do you mean, anything that I do believe in? Yeah, as far as... Um, I do believe we'll have an anything, election in November. I do believe that. Is there anything that you believe in supernaturally? No. No, not at all. No. Okay. And um, what is the reasoning for that? Were you... Um, I don't need reasoning for it. You need reasoning for believing, not for not believing. Well, like my father, who's an atheist, um, religion was shoved down his throat as a young child. And he ended up reading the Bible and, and just deciding for himself that that was Religion is shoved down everyone's throat as a child, with few exceptions. Right. And, and it, that's the reason why he... Decide to become an atheist. Well, that's that, his reason. Yeah, my father's reason. And I was wondering if it's the same for you. No. Uh, in my case, I just never believed any of it. Okay. Now, at, and I believe that as an atheist or a religious person of any sect, um, just being a good person is enough. Do you, do you agree? Well, it's your opinion. Uh, and, and for me, I'm a good person. I know I'm a good person. And I don't need the endorsement of uh, a book of fairy tales or a bunch of guys wearing frocks. I, I don't need that. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I mean, I, I somewhat believe the same thing, only the other thing is uh, I, I somewhat pray, you know, in the morning, just give thanks for the things I have. Do you give thanks for, for the things that you've acquired? No, everything I've acquired, I acquired through my hard work, my creativity, my risk-taking. Uh-huh. Uh, praying for things uh, doesn't work. 
Well, besides praying, what about giving just thanks? For to who? Well, I don't know. Maybe just to the universe. Because I believe that there's, um, there's universal laws, right? That no matter who you are or, or what you believe in, you can't get away from. And I believe that... No, these, no, there aren't. Yeah, you say there are, but there, there's no such thing. You, you don't agree with that? No. Okay. I mean, that, that's always been my... Um, I don't know. That's always been my example. You know, if you do something bad, it'll come back to you. In some well, way. you believe that. Okay, but you don't. You don't agree with that. Well, no, because look at all the bad people who get away with doing bad things. Right, but everything in this life, there's a price to pay. Well, you believe that, but there are many people who don't pay the price, and then there are many good people who get snuffed out. This is. I, I guess this is true. I mean, for I example, guess... do you think that any of the members of the Make a Wish Foundation, any of the uh, beneficiaries? Do you think they were bad people who deserve to get brain tumors and cancer when they're eight years old and stuff? Do you think they deserve that? Well, I don't think they deserved it. But what I do think is that it was there to teach them a certain thing. You well, know, oh, whatever oh, it was. Wow, I see. But the fact is that everybody uh, who does something good doesn't get what they deserve. And everybody who does something bad doesn't get what they deserve. Yeah, maybe not in this lifetime, but I think eventually... Well, it assumes you believe there are other lifetimes, which I don't. Well, I believe that everything you do in some way comes back to you. I mean, you, But you, you believe you, that, but I just don't think... I don't agree with that. Well, for, for instance, you've done a great deal of good for a lot of people just by having your radio show. And I think you're reaping the benefits of that. I, yeah, but I, it's not by doing good. The reason I, I, I have done so well and make so much money is because I generate revenue by having a good idea and by exploiting it. It has nothing to do with good doing good for people. Okay. If I were just doing, if I were just on the air and uh, telling dirty jokes and playing the hits and getting big ratings and uh, selling a lot of advertising, I'd also get paid well. Well, no, but I think you are provide a service you definitely provide a service where you the service that others. you think i'm providing is not what i'm paid to do i am paid to generate revenue well I mean, and the more revenue i have generated over the years the more money i have been paid and it has nothing to do with whether i've helped anybody well and by the way the radio stations that carry the show couldn't care less how I generate revenue, including if I stopped giving people advice and started doing something else that was equally compelling that got people to tune in, they wouldn't care. They'd still pay me. Well, I, I just wonder because of the fact that I, I've studied people that have made a lot of money in the world, correct? Right. And the people that have made a, a, a generous amount of money in the world have always been people that have started off in ways to help others. Like Donald Trump? Well, Donald Trump provided housing, correct? He didn't provide housing. He <laughs> provided housing for who? Well, in some ways he provided housing even if it was... Well, if you, build, if you build an apartment and you charge uh, the fair market price for it, you're not doing a public service. Uh, you are providing a business transaction. They, you're, you are providing a service that people are paying for. What about Bill Gates who started in, in his garage trying to provide, you know, a service for people? He wasn't trying to, to provide money. service for people. He was trying to make money. Correct. Well, I, I think he was trying to provide a service, and that's why he... So he didn't care about making money, Bill Gates. Bill Gates, the son of one of the richest no, no, guys I, I in think Seattle. he cared about making money, but I think his ultimate goal was, hey, how can we help others, um, you know... So the way he helps others is, is by uh, creating an operating system that has uh, all kinds of flaws and faults in it every time a new one comes out. Uh, he helped people by uh, trying to monopolize the entire computer business, uh, right? Right. That's how he's been helping people? Well, I mean, I, I, I see it a different way. I see it as the fact that he was trying to, you know, connect people in ways that they've never been connected before. So he could make money. Well, I think And by the way, there's product. nothing wrong with that. I'm a big supporter of it. But we just have to be honest. The motivation was not all that pure, for God's sake. The Tom Likas Show.